In this video, I just want to quickly explain the difference between the NIST Special Publication 853 and 853A. Other than just the title difference, you'll see here, 53 is just security and privacy controls for federal information systems and organizations. Here, 53A is assessing security and privacy controls. But as we get to the end here, there's a colon, building effective assessment plans. So the actual documents are pretty different. Here's 53A, and outside of the, the normal routine stuff you see in the beginning, they will approach security and privacy controls differently, right? Here's just 853, and I know you can read this fast, so I'll just keep scrolling like that. Just kidding, I have separate videos diving deeper into those. But I did pull apart three important things I think that will really differentiate 53A in your mind to 53, um, to make it really simple. But before I do that, let me just show you, once you click on the XML files for each of these, right? So it's right here. I opened this one up, and then I went down here and opened this one. And you can see there's two different dates for each of these. But here's 53, right? The main one, the first one. And the amount of detail here is just pretty extreme. And I have a separate video talking about this documentary. Not reading at all, but getting in there quite a bit. When we go over here to the XML for 53A, it does just look different from the beginning. So here we jump in with the controls. You have statements and numbers and descriptions, a statement again. Eventually you'll have supplemental guidance right here. But in terms of the XML for 53A, we just have these objectives and then a decision. You see that repeats itself quite a bit throughout the XML document. I see potential assessment here, which I didn't see those in the other document. But enough looking through these, let's get into the quotes I found for you. So not too long into reading SP53A, I found out why it's an A, why it's a separate one, because it is a companion guideline to 853. So there's my little Mad Max with his companion there. That's what 53A really is like. That's just the big difference. Now each publication provides guidance for implementing specific steps in the risk management framework, RMF. At first I thought RMF somehow related to radio frequencies, but it doesn't. Well, they go on to say that special publication 853, or 800-53, covers step two in the RMF. And if you want to read that for yourself, it's on page 12 of the uh, document. You see, I went to the wrong page 12 here. This is 800-53, revision 4. So this one is the uh, 53A. There we go. And on page 12, we have the foreword. And I'm going to pull two more paragraphs out of this foreword. But let's go over here. That's where I did it. I'm saying above the paragraph I just read to you. And this provides a terrific structure for explaining and justifying. So look at these sentence starters I underlined. It reads, the findings produced by assessors are used to determine the overall effectiveness of security and privacy controls associated with information systems. We're trying to figure out how effective a security control is in these information systems and their environments of operation. These NIST documents sound so wordy sometimes. But the findings provide credible and meaningful inputs to the organization's risk management process. Now, a well-executed assessment helps to determine the validity of the controls contained in the organization's security plans. So if you want to know an example of such a control, that's where these XML documents really come in handy. So here's a good example. An organization should identify and select the following types of information system accounts. And that organization can define different types. But the point is, you need different types. So one type is uh, an account manager. And then for the other accounts, especially like a group account, you would need to establish conditions for that group. So a well-executed assessment will say how valid the particular control is. These assessments should also facilitate a cost-effective approach to correcting weakness or defi deficiencies in systems in an orderly and disciplined manner. So business people out there are going to love this right here, a cost-effective approach to cybersecurity. Sounds good. So 53A is diving into this realm as it's being a companion to 853. 853 is detailing all those controls. 
And the last thing I'll point out in this video is just that the first paragraph of the forward itself, it actually begins with a little more emotion than I'm used to seeing in these types of publications, so I thought it would be good to read it. Security control assessments and privacy control assessments are not about checklists, simple pass-fail results, or generating paperwork to pass inspections or audits. Rather, such assessments are the principal vehicle used to verify that implemented security controls and privacy controls are meeting their stated goals and objectives. Pretty unique sentence in a NIST document. And at the end, I think these things right here, the checklist, the pass-fail results, and the paperwork, those are the vehicles that you're using to verify. So with that said, one last drive it home for you, an 800-53 difference between 53A, it really is in the titles. Here is the security and privacy controls, and here is all about assessing those controls, thus building an effective assessment plan.